Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius, and today I want to give you guys a closer look at the aquaponics system above my 880 gallon aquarium. I get quite a few questions about this system, so today I want to break it down for you guys, do a little Q&A, and at the end of the video I want to give you guys a way to create this on your own aquarium. So first off, for those of you who may not be familiar with the term, aquaponics is simply growing plants and dirty fish water. So whether you have a fish tank or a pond and you have fish living inside, those fish produce waste, and it just so happens that these plants enjoy consuming the waste produced by the fish. So whether you're a fish keeper or you're a plant enthusiast, it's a win-win situation. The plants enjoy eating the nitrates produced by the fish, and the fish enjoy a more cleaner aquarium once the plants remove the nitrates. Besides removing harmful nitrates from your water, plants also benefit because they produce oxygen, and they also just make your aquarium look a lot more natural. The addition of plants always make the scene just look more complete. Now one of the top questions I get about this system is what are the requirements to successfully grow plants above your aquarium like this? And I'd say there are two main necessities for this type of setup. One being dirty fish water, which I'm sure all of us have an abundance of, and two being lights. Now I'm going to be bold and I'm going to say that if any of us have had a hard time growing plants indoors, um, especially us who try to grow plants in our aquariums, I'm going to say that the leading cause to these problems is insufficient lighting. And I believe that there's just a lot of confusion when it comes to how much light these plants actually require, especially when you're working with artificial lights. Now you go to the store, you buy a plant, the plant is labeled as low light, but one of the things that we don't consider that a lot of times these ratings are based on sunlight. So we go and we buy a plant that is rated for low sunlight and we bring it home to our aquarium, which has low aquarium lights and the plant does terrible. And that's because low sunlight is not equivalent to low aquarium light. These aquarium lights and artificial lights are much weaker than the sun, so I believe that the standards are much different. So basically, if you've ever struggled to grow plants above your aquarium, I say check out your lights. A lot of times we're not using enough light, and just because you buy a plant that is rated for low lighting, doesn't necessarily mean you could get away with low artificial lights. Remember, we're competing with the sun, and the sun is extremely powerful. Now, if you look at my example, I'm growing plants like ferns, I'm growing peace lilies, I'm growing pothos, and in the wild all these plants will be grown in shade. These are all low light plants when you grow them in the sun. However, I'm growing them under artificial lights. I'm actually using somewhat of a powerful light. If I had to rate it out of 10, i say that this is 6 out of 10 when it comes to power. It has a 65k output, it has multiple color LEDs because that encourages better plant growth and yet these plants are directly underneath the light and they're doing fine. And these are low light plants and when it comes to aquariums I have them under high light. So it's really a, a change of scale and I believe that if I was to go to next level up, like I said these are low light plants, if I was to go to medium light plants or high light plants I would need a much stronger light. Altogether I believe that there's just a lot of confusion when it comes to the conversion of sunlight to artificial light and when it comes to rating these plants whether low, high, or medium light. So what I recommend is that you go ahead and buy the strongest light you can afford and you buy low light plants. And I believe a lot of times they will balance out because from my experience, low sunlight converts to high artificial light. If that's not the case for you, a lot of these newer lights are adjustable so you can always adjust it lower if necessary. Now fishy water and good lights are the only two things that you absolutely need for aquaponics but there are a few other things that you can add for a better experience including baskets or planters. I find that when you use baskets and planters it just creates a more organized look. It can help keep your plants a little bit more contained and also if you have any fish that may like to eat the roots or just destroy the roots, baskets and plants could definitely help with that. If you do choose to use baskets and planters in your aquaponic system, I recommend that you also use hydroponic clay pebbles as your substrate. I find this to be very useful, a number of different benefits, one of which is that they provide stability for your plants, they can help you position your plants and just keep them in that same position. And also these clay pebbles are very absorbent, they're like sponges. So if you have a basket and that basket is not fully in the water, they can actually draw water upwards. And a perfect example is in my setup, one of my planters is about five inches tall, but only about one inch gets water, but the clay pebbles allows moisture to be drawn all the way up to the top so that the plant itself, while it's inside the basket, is always moist. It's not completely wet, it's a moist environment, which is more beneficial for plants like ferns that don't really like being too soaked. So it's a really great substrate, from my experience the best substrate for this type of setup. Now one of the biggest questions that I get is what type of plants can be grown aquaponically? 
Now there are thousands of plants that you could grow aquaponically, you could grow house plants, you could grow herbs, you could grow fruits, you could grow vegetables, you could grow succulents. A lot of times you name it, you could grow it aquaponically. And it's gotten to the point where I see a plant of interest and I just go to Google and say, can I grow this aquaponically? And like seven out of 10 times, yes, you can grow it aquaponically. However, the difference maker is the lighting requirements. As I mentioned before, a lot of times these plants are rated with sunlight and there's a big difference between sunlight and artificial lights. Um, like when you try to grow vegetables aquaponically, vegetables are a highlight plant and that's in terms of sunlight. So I put my vegetables under my artificial light, high artificial light, and I was unsuccessful. So that's one of the things you gotta pay attention to. I recommend that you stick to low light plants and that's the reason why I have the collection that I have. So when you look at my setup, these are all low light plants under what I will call high lighting. And when we start from left, we have some classics like Poltos. And I love just the different colors that I get from that one plant. We have dark green, we have light green, and we have variated leaves. And I believe this is because it's growing so close to this light and the light has such a strong output. Right next to it, we have a Dracinia, a very beautiful plant. This is actually a cutting for one of my house plants and it's doing very awesome. Next to that, we have one of my favorites, the Boston Fern. The Boston Fern just has such a powerful look over this aquarium. Whenever I see ferns, I just think of Jurassic and I believe it fits so perfectly with these monster fish. So yeah, we have a nice Boston Fern. It might actually be two plants in this one basket, but they're growing very nicely. They love the um, clay pebbles that they're growing in. Like I said, it keeps it nice and moist. And these are low light plants in the wild, but under this artificial light, they grow well right up close to it. Right next to it, we have a peace lily. We have a larger peace lily. Look at this, massive, very beautiful. Peace lily, another low light plant. We have another peace lily over here. And imagine in the future when all three of them are this big. Um, definitely gonna look very awesome. This one was actually just added a couple of days ago. It came with the flower. Um, but yeah, this one still has to adjust to the environment. We have a piece of poltos right here. We have more poltos. Um, this leaf right here is Lucky Bamboo. Over here we have another Boston Fern. And then we have more poltos. Um, it, these plants are in baskets, most of them. I have this one in the basket, this one in the basket. Um, these are in baskets. And some of them are just directly in the water, like the poltos, the Lucky Bamboo, um, the Dracinia that you saw over there, I have them directly in the water and their roots are just dispersed in the water. Underneath this I have a little Peperomia. I'm probably going to have to take it out because it's going to be um, shaded too much by these other plants. And then in the center we have some beautiful nerve plants. We have a thyme plant, this is the herb. This smells so amazing. Whenever you touch it, it gives off this scent and definitely very nice. And then we have a little piece of a fern that came off one of my bigger ferns. And that is my collection, all these plants. Um, just did some research, look for low light plants, look for hardy plants. And this is the collection that I have and I definitely love this environment. Now creating this aquaponic system was very experimental. I was trying a lot of things for the first time and so I had a lot of successes and I also had a lot of failures. With that being said, I want to give you guys some things you definitely don't want to do if you're getting into aquaponics and one of which is using extra fertilizers. Now the purpose of aquaponics is to allow the fish to fertilize the water. So if you add any extra fertilizers, you have a risk of over fertilizing the water you're going to have too many nutrients in the water and it's a high chance you're going to have a problem with algae and you definitely don't want that. So don't add any extra fertilizers to your water. Another thing you don't want to do if you're getting into aquaponics above your fish tank is using rocks or gravel as your substrate. This is if you have a basket or a planter. You definitely don't want to use rocks and I learned this the hard way. Originally in my 880 gallon aquarium, my intent was to go bare bottom when it comes to the substrate of the entire tank. But now you see I have gravel and this is because when I first filled my planters with substrate I chose to use gravel and simply it was too heavy. It was like 10 to 15 pounds when, you, when I filled the planters up with gravel and over time they would just collapse into the aquarium and now I have gravel all over the bottom after trying time after time. Now this is a DIY plywood aquarium and it's very sturdy but I imagine if this was a glass aquarium that could have been very dangerous. So you definitely don't want to use gravel or rocks simply because it's just too heavy and you don't want that dangling above your aquarium. 
Now the last thing I want to warn you guys about is dirt. I actually say avoid using dirt in your aquaponic system. This is if you're using baskets or planters. Do not use dirt as a substrate for a number of reasons. You have the obvious reason of it being dirty. If that basket does fall into your tank, your tank will be a mess. But beyond that, um, dirt creates a lot of confusion for a lot of plants, especially terrestrial plants. I found that plants have two different types of roots. They have roots that are designed to grow in water and they have roots that are designed to grow in dirt. Now dirt roots and water roots have two different functions. Dirt roots are designed to take nutrients out of dirt and water roots are designed to take nutrients out of the water. And I find that the two cannot switch jobs. You cannot take a plant that was grown in water and put it in dirt and expect it to immediately take off. It's going to take time because it has to grow new roots just for that dirt. The same way if you take a plant from water, a plant that grows roots in water, it's going to have to grow new roots for dirt if you put it in dirt. Now if you take plants and you put them in water and dirt at the same time, I found from my experience that it confuses the plants and the plants never grow. I had plants in dirt, water mixed together and they just didn't grow and eventually they died and that's because the plants didn't know what type of roots to put out. Now of course in nature there are a few exceptions like you have bog plants. A bog is an environment that has dirt and water and you have plants that adapted to live in that environment. I have tried some of those plants when I was trying dirt on my setup but I find that bog plants require way too much light for these systems and altogether this is getting too deep into that plant science so I'm just going to say avoid dirt. Okay everyone, to finalize this video, I want to bring it home for you guys and show you how you can recreate this for your own aquarium. Obviously this is not your standard aquarium. I built this tank with the thought of having all these plants included. But if you have a more standard aquarium, how can you include aquaponics? Let's take a look. Okay, so this right here is my 210 gallon aquarium. And this is a more standard aquarium. When I say standard, not so much in size, but in the build. This was built by Aquion. And you're going to find some of the same features in this tank as some of their smaller aquariums. And I think that a lot more people can relate to this. Um, if you're seeing this tank for the first time, this is Indonimus, the guardian of this aquarium. My most aggressive fish, he's a beast. And um, he's in here with a little female convict. But I'm starting to do aquaponics in this tank as well. Now, this is fairly new, only about a week old, so it looks very immature. But you could get an idea of how you could do aquaponics in a more standard aquarium. And I wait, when I say standard, I mean with some of these standard features like a center brace. So with Aquion, aquariums 55 gallons and larger, they come with these, these middle braces. And these are perfect for just coming up with these creative ideas. Right here I have some egg crate. I have zip dies connecting the egg crate to here. I cut out a little hole inside the egg crate. And then I have one of these planters. This is a planter that came free with a plant. Inside I have some clay pebbles. Again, never use gravel. Gravel will probably be too much strain on the brace and these are very important. So you don't want to put too much strain. These um, clay pebbles are much lighter. And like I said, they're, um, very, they're very absorbent. So you can see only that much of the, of the planters in the water. But if you look at the top, all the pebbles are moist because they're like sponges, they're bringing it up. And this right here is a little piece of Boston Fern, by the way. Right now it's a very immature setup, but I'm sure you can see the potential. Um, imagine when this fern starts to get very big, it's going to look awesome. I think I might actually make a few tweaks. I'm going to get a bigger piece of egg crate that comes out more. So I can have another pot over here, maybe another pot over there. And imagine three ferns up here. That alone will look very amazing. Not to mention it's helping me clean up with the nitrates produced by the fish. And this is actually going to be um, very successful in this aquarium. Just because I have a small bio load in this tank with one fish. Um, so yeah, definitely an awesome setup and really it's going to take time for you guys to really um, get a good look at this but um, definitely doable in your more average aquarium and of course you have the the common way you could just go with pothos which is an old-fashioned plant just stick the plant in the water and it does amazing I have pothos in the water over here I drilled a little hole so it could come out of the tank and it comes out down here and I also have another piece you can see the vine going around the room um, so yeah aquaponics definitely doable regardless of the size of your aquarium. So that has been a look at the aquaponic system above my 880 gallon aquarium. Definitely a very amazing feature to have on your aquarium and I highly recommend it. Now hopefully I answer all your questions. Um, if you have any more questions or if I created more questions for you just let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you whenever I can. 
Um, but yeah, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you enjoyed it all together. And I guess I'll catch you guys on the next one.